I just noticed this on Instagram and I would like to compliment you. Nothing for the person who has ever seen. Congratulations. You have received the gift of nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is the ultimate in minimalism. Less is more, more or less. Nothing is precious. Nothing is simple. Nothing is sacred. Open the pack and be enthralled when nothing happens. Allow nothing to flow through your mind and calm your soul. Savor the moment soon you'll discover that nothing really is so much better than something. It's okay if you thought you were over it, but it takes you all over again. It's okay to fall apart even if you thought you had it under control. You're not weak. Healing is messy. And there's no timeline for healing. Person Mr. Good Heart puts up with way too much asterisk 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 asterisk. My Saturday was going pretty well until I realized it was Sunday. She did not let go of people quickly. Instead, she gave too many chances. And carried others' darkness as her own. And then one day she woke up and was done. It was over just like that. Owed to you all, out of respect for those that dared to open their heart and soul. Cry out loud my friend, for the pain inside will kill you, but the screech as loud as you can is the start of the healing. You so desperate long for. Nothing can stop you now. Brer Caleb, PhD. Tough times never last, tough people do. Late on September the 15th and early on September 16th, warplanes of the Russian Aerospace Forces carried out a large-scale strike on weapon depots and training camps of Turkish-backed terrorists in the Syrian province of Idlib. According to pro-government sources, over 30 Russian strikes hit the areas of Sheikh Bar, Sheikh Dawud and Ma'arat Mizrin. This operation became the most recent in a series of strikes on terrorist infrastructure in the region. The Russian Defense Ministry is not commenting on the situation, but the reaction of Turkish propaganda and Al-Qaeda terrorists demonstrates that the impact of the strikes is much higher than they are ready to admit. In response, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham terrorists, the main Turkish ally in Idlib, shelled several positions of the Syrian army and civilian targets in western Aleppo and southern Idlib. Local sources claim that at least three civilians were injured, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham affiliated media also claimed that two Syrian soldiers were killed in the area of Ruwaiha. Meanwhile, in northern Syria, Turkish proxies claimed that their forces had killed two Syrian troops near the town of Ain Issa. The Turkish military and pro-Turkish militants have abandoned attempts to capture the town, but they continue to violate the ceasefire regime there regularly. A similar situation is observed near Tal Tamar, where Turkish militants regularly shell civilian targets, claiming that they are destroying military positions of the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces. On September the 15th, a US military helicopter made an emergency landing in the province of al Hazaka. According to the US-led coalition, the incident was not the result of hostile activity and led to no casualties. Emergency forces were subsequently deployed to the area and the crew was recovered. Pro-militant and pro-Israeli sources released a series of reports that a new Israeli strike targeted alleged Iranian positions near the town of al Kamar. These claims were not confirmed by any evidence on the ground, but their timing was interesting. Just recently, US mainstream media alleged that Iran was planning the assassination of the US ambassador to South Africa, attributing the information to an unnamed US government official and another official who had seen the intelligence. This would reportedly be in retaliation for the January 3rd assassination of Iranian Major General Qasem Soleimani, which had been carried out by a US drone strike in Iraq's capital, Baghdad. At that time, media speculation led to the following comment by President Donald Trump that any attack by Iran in any form against the United States will be met with an attack on Iran that will be 1,000 times greater in magnitude. 
A small media victory over Iran in Abu Kama fits nicely with these comments and avoids the risk of writing another lengthy explanation of why the world superpower is not reacting to a public Iranian missile strike on its military bases in the Middle East. Good day, this is Greg Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. That means that I continue to dig on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. And if you happen to be one of them, folks, it has taken me a long time to discover what I'm sharing with you. Yes, I am 70 years of age. I was born in June of 1950. And I tell you, being stubborn, is maybe something that was in my blood. But because we hang on to certain values, I finally discovered what can make us tick, what can make you happy and successful. Being 70 doesn't mean you're over the hill. I just got started. I know that in the old days, there were men of 85 years of age stronger than when they were 45. And that is what I'm determined to do, to succeed because I'm planted on the water side. But I like to share with you certain issues of concern because today, today, we have something happening, folks, that I'm really concerned about. Let me share with you what that is. Yes, folks, you see it right. It is a thousand times greater magnitude, a thousand times greater in magnitude sitting in the White House what is happening and why am I so concerned about it? Folks, the concern that I have is that we as a society don't realize what is happening. Earth, wind and fire. It seems that they are all attacking the United States all at once. I feel sorry and I'm really you know, giving you my condolences for those that are facing all that hardship. Right now, you're dealing with a pandemic. You're dealing with water coming down like there's no tomorrow. You're dealing with fire, earth, wind, and fire. It's all coming together. But folks, your greatest disaster is sitting in the White House. I'm from Europe. As a matter of fact, I'm in the Netherlands. We are very far removed. And every time that gentleman opens his mouth, something comes out of it that affects me. I'm on a pension and all the goods, everything, the day-to-day -day stuff that you need goes up because he takes his position. It is not make America great again. It is tear America apart. Folks, that is what we're seeing. You folks came over in 1945, actually, when the war started. You came over to set us free and help us. 1945, my correction, the war's finished. And it was Americans, and it were Canadians, Australians, English people that came over to set us free. And I'm so grateful for that. But right now, it is not that you're coming here to set us free. There is a disaster happening because this man is tearing down all walls. As the Americans had built up a great reputation, you also now have a great reputation of disgust. People don't want to hear about it. They are falling apart because they're wondering what in the world is going on. And folks, I'm not, but my book was not earth, wind and fire, but deception protocol. And the book talks about PMS. We are suffering of a disease called PMS that I found out in my life. 
PMS is not the women's disease as most of us know the PMS term, but it is P stands for politics, M stands for money, and S stands for spirituality. And right now it is being manipulated into the in the warehouse and the White House, which is almost like a warehouse because they're trading and making deals as long as it benefits him. Folks, I realize that everything will come to an end. And we have seen it in tremendous examples of Rome. They were a tremendous powerhouse. We also know that many other kingdoms came and went. And also England had its time. Now the United States under this president is tearing down their great name because once you leave the rule of law and particularly the spiritual rule of law, you have a major problem. I'm not here to tell you that it is the end time because it is not. It is a beginning of something new. And yes, something has to be broken down first before another part can start. But folks, as the rule of law is broken down and turned down, upside down, by a man that does not even remember the lie he said the day before, the day before that one, I share with you one concern. What is going on in the White House? And how long are you enabling this man to be a deranged individual? I dare say deranged. Because it is my concern that if you don't step up now and show that you are the ones that can determine who is sitting in that White House, I should say, released a major problem called Trump. Not four more years, folks. Please, remember, we all have a chance to repent. I had to change my lifestyle because certain things were going haywire. And we all make mistakes. Even Trump can make mistakes. But if he does not want to acknowledge them, then you are the enabler that allows him to manipulate and destroy what it has taken seven generations to build. Respect. And respect you have lost today around the world. And you're losing more and more. And if he is going to hang on to power by creating a war with Tehran or Iran, Please think about it because I am concerned. I am truly concerned. My name is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD I earned in the Desert University as post hole digger, digging for a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. And folks, remember tough times never last, but tough people do. God bless you. Bye for now.